good morning everyone um so we are recording now so let us complete the example the second example from yesterday uh and i want to the main goal today is to do a really big example of edmunds algorithm and to demonstrate we are that example that it's uh, fairly non trivial and there is quite a few things that one has to keep track of uh but at the same time of course it works so we will formalize our things on monday today we will just focus on a big example uh before that let's conclude uh, the smaller example from yesterday right so we had this graph g with the matching m and we reached the situation after shrinking one odd cycle 489 we got to the graph g prime and we constructed this pre t prime and in this t prime observe that the black colored vertices namely q3 5 and 7 they form a stable set and they have no neighbors outside the tree outside the vertices of t prime so at this point we can neither grow the tree nor do we have an odd cycle to shrink right because we are looking for odd cycles created by edges joining two black vertices but we don't have any such edges right so at this point we can do neither of the two things but the cool thing is at this point the white vertices of the tree t prime will give you uh, will give us a tut set and why is that happening well uh, 3 5 and 7 it's quite clear that they will uh, their only neighbors are 0 1 and 2 uh, even in the original graph right uh, what i sorry what i mean is yeah so 3 5 and 7 uh, all of their neighbors are contained in 0 1 and 2 so they will become isolated vertices let's just check if i delete 0 1 and 2 uh, 3 5 and 7 all become isolated vertices in the original graph observe that 0 1 2 let me just mark it um in blue maybe so 0 1 2 is here 3 5 and 7 become isolated vertices and the vertex q which is not really a vertex of the original graph so we are going to call vertices of the tree as uh, nodes i'll try to refer to them as nodes and these kinds of vertices like q which are not actually vertices in the original graph we will call them pseudo nodes okay but the pseudo node corresponds to an odd set of vertices in the original graph right um so that is 4 8 and 9 and that is another odd component after deleting 0 1 and 2 and it kind of makes sense right because we shrunk 4 8 9 into a single vertex and now its only neighbors in the original graph are contained in 0 and 1 as you can see in the tree t prime okay so right so we get four odd components but we have deleted only three vertices okay um note that the original graph g minus um, let's call these vertices sorry 6 10 11 right it is also an odd component you are right yes uh it is an odd component that we are not seeing in the tree but it makes sense because uh, we have an even number of vertices and we are deleting three vertices so you would expect there to be an um odd number of odd components is that right a uh, by parity you have three vertices which is an odd number and you should have an odd number of odd components in order for the total number of vertices to be even so actually the tree only gives you um w plus 1 odd components where w is this set right so g minus um w has at least cardinality of w plus 1 odd components but by parity you should have at least w plus 2 odd components uh yes yes right because the trees uh, because it's, this is similar to the bipartite stuff no 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 so this is so the you mean from the tree we are getting exactly one more odd component right so that is not a coincidence because in the tree we have the matching covering all the vertices except the root 
so the number of black vertices in the tree the black nodes is going to be exactly one more than the number of white nodes right so we will get exactly w plus one odd components if we just look at the tree but when we go to the original graph there might be even more odd components exactly so it's not a coincidence Uh, are there any questions or concerns apart from that? Okay, so this is our set um, W coming from the tree. Also, I want to point out that the pseudo nodes in the tree will only be in the set U. It will only be the black colored nodes that some of them might be pseudo nodes. The white colored nodes in the trees will always correspond to original vertices in the original graph. They will never correspond to pseudo nodes. Okay. All right, when we expand it, yes. But at if we are looking at a tree at any point, the white vertices will be original vertices of the graph and the pseudo node, every pseudo node will be a collection of odd number of vertices of the original graph which we might have to do iteratively which will become clear in the bigger example when we look at it right all right any other questions or concerns how many people are in the call Okay. Good morning, Madhav. Can you hear me? All right. So let's move to a big example. And this is going to take a while. Okay. So uh, bear with me. It's a graph on 20 vertices. And I want to run the entire Edmonds algorithm. And uh, we might even spill over time for all I know, but I want to finish this example today. All right, so. Okay, so here is the graph G. Um, it's a graph on 20 vertices. And I'm going to run the entire algorithm. It will take some four to five iterations. I mean, it will take four to five uh, different graphs that we will be deriving from the original graph. So let me start numbering zero, one, three, five, six. Nine, ten, two, four, seven, eight, eleven, twelve. Um, okay, seven goes to ten, one goes to nine, and two goes to ten. Okay, and I've got a thirteen and fourteen over here. 7 goes to 13 and 8 goes to 14 and 13 to 16 just two neighbors 17 and 18 here got uh, 14 to 18 I've got a vertex 19 over here which goes to 13 14 and 18 And I've got a vertex 15, which goes to 14 and 2. All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. 
Okay, so that's our graph G. Okay, and let me show you a matching M, which will be starting with it will match all the vertices except two vertices okay so either it is a either it either the graph has a perfect matching and we can make it bigger by one edge or we will be able to find a touch set so this is one three this is two four in the matching five nine is in the matching six ten is there seven eleven is there eight twelve uh, 19 to 14 is in the matching, 13 to 16, and 17 to 18. Okay, so that's our matching M. All right. Okay, so we have two exposed vertices. Uh, those are 0 and 15. Okay. Are there any questions or concerns at this point? Is the graph clear? Okay, let me see if I can make a quick copy of this um, drawing. Maybe you should make a copy before the matchings. Uh, oh. Yeah, it might be a bit late now, but we won't change the matching actually for a long time. Okay, good. I made a copy of this. So that should suffice for now. Yeah, so we won't, we will only change the matching uh, once in this example. So that won't matter a lot. Okay, so the main point of this example is that we are only going to, in this example, we will only end up finding one, um, um, either we will find one augmenting path or we will find the touch set. But in order to get to either of those conclusions, we will have to draw the graph multiple times and we will have to shrink a bunch of odd cycles to get there. And there will also be nested odd cycles. You will uh, see what I mean when you see it, okay? So that's the main point of this example. Okay, so let's start constructing our tree. And in the interest of uh, time, I will probably not draw the matching edges in red color every time. Okay, I will just draw them as the uh, wavy colored edges. So let's start at the vertex zero, which is uh, one of our two M exposed vertices. And let's try to build our tree as usual. Okay. Uh, we will have choices at times, and I will make specific choices based on what I've already done because I want to demonstrate certain aspects of the algorithm. Okay, so zero has uh, one neighbor one, which is already matched to the vertex three. Okay, so the wavy colored edges correspond to the matching edges in the trees. Okay, and zero's got uh, one more neighbor two, which is also matched to a vertex four, uh, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so we are constructing the tree T. We are trying to grow it. All right. So now let's look at three. Three has got uh, four neighbors, one, two, five, and six. One and two are already white, white nodes in the tree, uh, and five and six are new. So I will first add five, which is matched to nine. And next I will add six, which is matched to 10. Okay. Uh, and let me look at the other side four. Four is matched, uh, four has three neighbors, two, seven, and eight. So let's look at seven, which is matched to two, oh, sorry, um, my bad. It's not two, it's 11. And there is a neighbor eight, which is matched to 12. Okay, 
and let me just uh, put this 11 again. Okay. All right. So now let's see what we can do. So clearly zero has no more neighbors. Three and four are also exhausted because they're all neighbors are uh, in the tree and they are white colored neighbors if there are any. Uh, the only vertices we need to look at now are the nodes, the black colored nodes are 9, 10, 11, and 12. So let's see what's going on there. Uh, nine's neighbors are 5, 1, and 10, which and two of them are white nodes in the tree. The only option is 10. So that gives us an odd cycle. So let me just put that as a dotted line. And 11 and 12 are also joined. So I'll also put that as a dotted line. Okay. And notice that these are all the all the edges joining two black word, black nodes. I've already drawn them in this graph, in this tree. Right. So I've dotted them, uh, drawn them as dotted lines uh, in addition to the tree edges. Okay. And the black nodes don't have any neighbors outside the tree in the original graph G. So at this point, we have only two choices, either to choose the edge 9, 10 and shrink this odd cycle or to choose the edge 11, 12 and shrink that odd cycle. Are there any questions or concerns? Okay, so we may choose to shrink any of these two odd cycles. Okay, so let me just call them uh, Q and Q1 based on the choices I made a priori. I'm going to choose Q. Okay. So I'm going to choose uh, Q as the odd cycle to shrink and uh, the tree will be modified accordingly and the graph will also be modified accordingly. Okay. So let's choose Q. All right. Is everybody with me? I'm going to paste the graph here. And I'm going to make local changes and modify it. Okay, so what is Q? Q is 3, 5, 6, 9, and 10. So let me simply erase it, 3, 5, 6, 9, and 10, and shrink it to a single vertex and draw and then draw the corresponding edges. So the shrunken vertex, I'm going to represent it by little q. And this little q here represents 3, 5, 6, 9, and 10. Okay. So what are the neighbors of this q? Let me erase these edges, which are not necessary. Okay. So what are all the neighbors of q? Uh, Sorry, two is there, yes, and seven is there, yes, and one is already there, okay, good. So that's it, right? Uh, three of the edges are going into two, one of the edges is going into seven, and two of the edges are going into one. So we are going to have only three edges to one, two, and seven. Okay, great. So let's keep, we want to remember what Q represents. Okay. So you can, when you're actually implementing the algorithm, you store it somewhere that this is what Q represents. Okay. And let's do the same thing in the tree. So by the way, this is not the graph G anymore. Oh, and we also need to change the matching. So what happens to the matching? Well, the matching, basically we keep it the same. The vertex one was matched to the cycle Q. Observe that the cycle Q all the vertices are matched amongst each other except for the vertex three, right? So that one will correspond to the 
Um, Uh, maybe I should have color it. Sorry. So what was it? One, two, and seven again. Yeah. This is Q, and here I will color it red. Uh, so this is our matching M prime. Okay. Okay. So this is our graph, uh, this is our matching M prime, and this is our graph, uh, sorry, I'm calling it M1 actually, because we will have multiple uh, graphs. So this is our graph G1, and the matching is M1. Okay. And now we want to try the same process on this graph. But even the tree, we won't rebuild the tree completely. We will just modify the tree in the same way that we modified the graph. We will shrink those five vertices into a single vertex, into a single pseudo node. Okay. All right. So the T1, which we are going to try to build further, but we will start from what we already have. So we have got okay. So this is zero, one, two. This is going to be the vertex Q, uh, the pseudo node Q, sorry. Four, seven, eight, eleven, and twelve. Okay. All right, so now let's see what we can do. Well, at this point, we are trying to build T1 further and the graph we are looking at is G1 with the matching M1, right? So let's look at the black nodes and pseudo nodes and observe that the only possibility we have at this point is to shrink the cycle Q1. We could have chosen that first. That would have saved us some effort, but I there is a reason I chose Q first. Okay. So next we need to shrink uh, this cycle Q1, and then we will proceed further. And at that point we will see that we can actually build the tree further in interesting ways. Okay. All right. So now we shrink. you want okay all right so let me see if i can make a good copy of all of this stuff Let's go to the next page and paste it. All right. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, shrink Q1 into a single vertex. Okay, so Q1 is 4, 7, 8, 11, and 12. So I'm going to erase those five vertices and replace it with a single vertex. Okay. And the matching will be modified in the sense that all the edges that are in the matching will remain except for the edges of the cycle Q1. And the 2, 4 edge will be replaced by 2, 2, Q1. Okay. So let's erase all of this. and put a vertex Q1 over here. Okay, and we need to figure out its neighbors. So that means we should uh, go to the previous page and look at all the neighbors of it. Okay, so we've got four Q, 13, 14, 
and is that all yeah 4q 13 and 14 ah uh, sorry 4 is uh, right so it's only uh 2q 13 and 14 right my bad right so we've got 2q 13 and 14 okay and the matching has to change in an appropriate manner so the edge 2 to 4 will be replaced by 2 to q1 okay let's just go back to make sure everybody is on the same page so we've got 2 to 4 and we are replacing it by 2 to q1 because that is the only edge going into q1 which is not a coincidence that is how we are shrinking the odd cycles in the first place okay good okay and we also need to make the same modification in the tree so let's uh, call it t2 so now this graph is going to be yeah so i should change this graph is uh, g2 and the matching is m2 and uh, q1 we should keep track that it represents uh, certain vertices right so i'll just put it down here q1 represents 4 7 8 11 and 12 okay good and now let's uh, modify the tree so in the tree we are going to replace all of these five nodes by a single node q1 okay okay are there any questions or concerns at this point is everybody with me Okay, so let's see if we can build this tree further. Of course, observe that there is an edge between Q and Q1. So I could just choose to shrink that odd cycle, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to build the tree as much as I can and then see what odd cycle to shrink later. But you can choose that. It's just not the choice I'm going to make for right for now. Okay, so Q does not have any neighbors outside. All its neighbors are one, two and Q1. However, Q1 has other neighbors outside namely 13 which is matched to 16 and 14 which is matched to 19 so let's build the tree in that way okay oh sorry okay so q1 has neighbors 13 okay 13 and it is matched to 16 and 14 which is matched to 90. Okay. And let's see if we can build it further. 16 has a neighbor 17, which is matched to 18. So I can do that. Uh, let me. Yeah. So 16 has a neighbor 17. And that is matched to 80. And now let's look at uh, 19. 19's neighbors are 13, 14, and 18, which are all uh, inside here. Okay. So at this point, observe that the only possibility we have is to shrink some odd cycle. Okay. Because all the black nodes, they don't have any neighbors outside the tree. All of their neighbors are in this tree and some of them have edges between them so some of the black nodes are joined with each other so there are two possibilities if i'm not mistaken uh, we have the possibility to either choose this edge 16 to 18 or we have the possibility of choosing 18 to 19. okay each of them gives us an odd cycle one gives us a three cycle and the other one gives us a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cycle. 
So we can choose either of those two cycles. And I'm going to make a specific choice for now. I'm going to choose the cycle Q3, which is a three cycle, 16, 17, 18. Okay. Are there any questions or concerns? We may choose either the three cycle Q3 or A7 cycle. I won't give it a name, but it's clear from the picture, right? So just for completeness, uh, yes. 16 and 19 would also form another cycle. Ah, 16 and 19. Are they joined? Sorry. 16 and 19 are not joined. Okay, yes, sir. In my graph, I this. I okay. okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of vertices and edges, so it's easy to make uh, errors. Oh, there is one more choice, however. There is one more choice, which is Q to Q1. Yeah. Okay. So Q to Q1 is also an edge or a five cycle. And all of them are indicated by the three edges. Whenever you add any of those edges, you get a unique odd cycle in the tree plus that edge. And those are the cycles we are referring to. Okay. So we have got three choices, but I'm going to choose Q3. Let's choose. Q3. Okay. So let's do that. So now we want to shrink. 16, 17, 18 into a single uh, vertex in the graph, right? Okay. So let me select things and try to make a copy. By the way, okay, I changed G1, M1, T1 to G2, M2, T2. Okay, good. Uh, Okay, so I'll just make a copy of the graphs because we don't have a lot of space here. So. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so drawing is a bit smaller, but I hope it's still visible. Okay, so let's see. So we want to shrink 16, 17, 18 into a single vertex. So let's do that. Let us erase this stuff here. And let us put a single vertex Q3. Okay. What are its neighbors? 19, 13, and 14. Okay. Uh, so hopefully we have drawn all the edges, right? So this is the graph G3. And what about the matching? How does that change? Can somebody tell me? Right. So instead of 13, 16, we will have 13 to Q3. Right. So that's going to be our matching M3. Okay. And let us modify the tree. So the tree, uh, we are going to keep as it is more, more or less, except for these three vertices become a single pseudo node. 16, 17, 18 will simply become Q3. Okay. 
All right, and that is T3. Good. Any questions or concerns? All good so far? Okay, so at this point, um, we have again a few choices. So we can't build the trees any further. Observe that all the black uh, nodes, their neighbors are in the tree itself. And there are only two choices, if I'm not mistaken. One is the choice QQ1 that we did not make earlier. And we also have an edge between Q3 and 19, which also creates an odd cycle. Right? Those are the two choices. So I'm going to choose the Q3 19 one. Okay. So we have a. Uh, we may choose any of the two five cycles that are indicated by the dotted line edges. And let us choose the second one, uh, Q4. OK? Maybe I should also make a note of what does Q3 represent. Q3 uh, So by the way, there was was there a Q2 or did I miss a Q2? Oh, I directly switched to Q3. <laughs> sure, let me let me actually make a change to that. Right? I mean Okay, I'll just change that because it doesn't make sense to skip Q2. So this is going to be Q2, sorry. Uh, I made a mistake in my, small mistake in my notes, I didn't realize. Of course, it's just notation, it doesn't matter. I think it looks nice if we proceed in sequence. So, sorry, that's not small Q, capital Q. Okay, so the Q3 that I've been calling Q3 is actually Q2, I bad. And Q2 represents uh, 16, 17, 18. Okay. Good. Uh, and now we are going to choose. Um, okay, so this is this node, this pseudo node is uh, Q2 actually. And this cycle that I'm calling Q4 should be called Q3. Okay, yeah, so apologies for that. Uh, this should also be uh, Q2 here. Okay, all right. So we first shrunk a cycle Q, then we shrunk Q1, then we shrunk Q2, and now we are choosing Q3. All right. Observe that this is a very interesting point. In this particular cycle, we already have two pseudo nodes corresponding to Q1 and Q2. Okay. Um, so one way to think about it is the following Q3 corresponds to Q1, 13, 14, Q2, and 19. However, remember that Q1 and Q2 both represent an odd number of vertices. So in some sense, this pseudo node Q3 represents not just five vertices, it actually represents more vertices in the original graph. So I'm going to replace Q1 and Q2 by what they represent, just to make it clear what's really going on. So Q1 is 4, 7, 8, 11, 12. So 4, 7, 8, 11, 12. And then we have 13 and 14 which are original vertices. Then we have Q2, which is 16, 17, and 18. And finally, we have the vertex 19. Observe that this is an odd number of vertices of the original graph. Can someone count it how many they are? 11, right? 11 vertices of the original graph. So each pseudo node represents an odd number of vertices in the original graph. This is related to touch theorem. If we find a touch set 
these pseudo nodes will correspond to odd components after deleting the touch set. Okay. And it makes sense because we are basically adding an odd number of odd numbers. Right. Either you have things like 13, 14, 19, which are just single vertices, or you have these pseudo nodes, and each pseudo node corresponds to an odd number of vertices in the original graph or in a recursive fashion. Right. So all we are doing is we are adding a bunch of odd numbers, and that is an odd number of odd numbers. So this is not a coincidence. Okay. All right. And now let's do this uh, one more iteration. So let me make a copy of this stuff. And let's go to the next uh, level. Okay. So let's go to one more page. And I think we will go over time. We will probably finish by nine o'clock, hopefully. All right. So what are we doing? We are um, shrinking Q3 to a single vertex. Is that right? Okay. So let's do that. What is Q3? It's uh, so. Let me first modify the graph. It's uh, Q1, 13, 14, uh, Q2, and 19. So that means I can erase all of this stuff. Okay. And let me put a single vertex instead. Uh, Q3. Which represents those five vertices that I just deleted. And what are the neighbors of Q3? Uh, uh, Q2, sorry, Q, right, okay, Q2 and 15, okay, right, yes, thank you. So let's do that. Q, 2, and 15, is that correct? Yeah, okay, so let me just go back to this page. Okay, right. Sorry, I was looking at the graph G2 and I was very confused. Right, makes sense. Okay, Q2 and 15. I should be looking at G3. Good. And uh, the matching edge is going to be which one? Uh, 2, 2, 2, 2, Q3, right? Right, okay. So we are going to have this matching edge 2, 2, Q3. Okay. And this is our G4 and M4. Okay. Let me erase this. Uh, we already have all this information. Okay. And let us uh, change the tree accordingly. So we will shrink these five vertices five nodes into a single pseudo node. Okay. So we've got Q3 uh, over here. Okay. And now let's look at our graph and see if we can build this tree any further. Okay. So Q3, aha, uh -huh, this is good, right? Q3 has a neighbor 15, which is an M4 exposed vertex. So what we have is an M4 augmenting path. Right? So we have found an M4 augmenting path. Let me call it a P4. It goes from 0 to 2 to Q3 to 15. Okay. All right. So this is an M4 augmenting path with respect to the graph G4 and the matching M4, of course. 
turns out we can now trace back our steps in some sense and translate this m4 augmenting path into an m augmenting path in the original graph what we need to do is we need to reverse this shrinking operation step by step and every time we get an odd cycle we will be able to extend this path to an augmenting path in the previous graph okay is everybody with me so far are there any questions or concerns at this point notice that we also had a choice we could have chosen the uh, this q q3 edge and we could have shrunken the cycle but we don't need to do that we have just found an augmenting path so we'll just change the matching and we will repeat this entire process with the new matching except that in this case we will get a perfect matching so we won't be proceeding any further right but in general you may not have a perfect matching yet it's just one bigger than the previous matching so you may have to continue this process until you get a perfect matching or a touch set so now i want to trace back all the steps we did uh, let's see if we have the time for it uh, it's 850 um should be or should we not you know what or yeah that's one thing you could do or we can stop at this point leave it as a try it yourself and complete it on monday yeah okay so maybe i'll give it as a try it yourself it's also a good thing for you all to try so uh we will do this on monday anyways i'll just make a note here i also don't know if this class is used for anything else but he may have to go somewhere okay so what i want you to do is um uh unshrink the uh necessary odd cycles you will realize that you may not need to unshrink all odd cycles just the ones that are relevant to this path p4 unshrink the necessary odd cycles uh step by step and uh transform p4 into an m augmenting path p with respect to the original graph g okay so yeah i think this is a good thing to try yourself um and we will complete the example on monday by doing these steps okay uh, one more thing i want you to try is the following so are those two edges correct shanti yeah okay so another thing to try yourself uh, from the graph g remove two edges consider the original graph g minus 7 10 and 14 15 and do the same steps basically observe that all the steps we did more or less just go through uh, and towards the end there will be some changes and you will find a touch set and um, repeat well run the algorithm run the algorithm with uh, very few changes to what we have done and find a touch set at the end okay and uh, we will also discuss this on monday all right so that's all for now are there any questions or concerns Okay, if not, I'm going to stop recording.